when it comes to school and just thinking back in your youth, right, your upbringing, mm -hmm. did you ever have a worst first day of school experience? Um, was it a particular grade that just comes through your memory that yeah, was just awful? Yeah, my first day of school in the seventh grade, I'll tell you why. My mother started getting a deal on sh shoes that was too big for me, size 13s. Mm. I had to wear size 13 shoes to school. I was like five feet, nigga. I had to wear a size 13 shoe to school. <laughs> it was a Jordan, but that bitch was long as my homie the clown status. So I've always been, you know what I mean, an uh, active young motherfucker. Like, I was always active, you know what I'm saying? And, and growing up in D.C., I was always outside. That was just me. And I was in that group of students or group of dudes that was always joning, you know what I mean? So I was so terrified to go to school because I knew with these big ass shoes on, niggas was going to cook me. <laughs> and, and I got there and I just was preparing jokes the whole night before. <laughs> you know how motherfuckers is laying their outfit out? I was like, fuck that outfit, nigga. I got to figure out how to make a comeback for these big ass shoes. And to this day, the greatest joke ever told to me in my whole life was told to me on that day. Nobody, and after that day, nobody was ever able to get me for the big shoes because I was used to just light niggas up. But dude said, damn, Bean, boy, you Bobby's world with them <laughs> big-ass shoes and that big-ass head. <laughs> I had to quit. And mind you, by that time, I had already been going at it with niggas for like an hour. <laughs> but that one just made me quit. But niggas respected it after that, so I had to wear the big shoes, man. And my mother was a very unique Mom, you know, my like my father was killed. So, you know, and all the dudes in my family, all the male influences, all her brothers and cousins and all them dudes was street niggas. So they really didn't have the time to nurture me and make sure that I had all of the things necessary for a young man to be able to prosper. They just made sure I had the shit that they felt like I needed, which was important. But my mother was very unique because she knew she didn't know how to teach me how to be a man, but she definitely was able to guide me through the you know, the trials and tribulations and nurture me through the process of me becoming a man. So she told me, I was like, mom, man, I don't want to win them big old shoes in school. She said, I'm going to tell you something, nigga. She said, as long as I'm buying the shoes, then you're going to wear what the fuck I bring in. <laughs> you want to start and making requests and complaints about what's going on? Buy your own shoes. Mm. You want to complain about how I get your haircut? Pay for your own haircuts. Mm. And after that, that year, them big ass shoes, I've been buying my own shoes ever since. Now, ever since the summer, summer of seven, the summer from the seventh grade going into the eighth grade, I'd have been making my own money for real. Now, um, what size shoe were you wearing before the 13? Like a nine. Oh, man, that's terrible. Yeah, then she <laughs> bought me a big ass pair of 13 Tims, nigga. Now, how long did these shoes last for? Okay, so you get roasted, you're doing the roasting back the first day, but how long do you have to keep with this, these shoes? Nigga, the whole year. Fuck is you talking about? The whole year. That's what the, the nigga, I don't know how this nigga was getting her these big ass shoes or where they was coming from, but that's what she was getting. And and that's what, that's what I had to wear, man. And, mm. you know, that's what, you know, and that's the thing, you know, I didn't really know we was poor. Do you know what I'm saying? I didn't. Like my mother, my mother made sure that we had everything that we needed and some of what we wanted. But I wanted everything that I wanted. So a lot of the fucked up decisions that I made in the streets and things that I did in the streets growing up was just because of, you know, greed. You know what I'm saying? And me wanting to be the person that I felt like I was on the inside, but the only way that I can display being that person was what I had on and what I show outwardly. So I had to grow into learning that that was bullshit, but you know, at that time when you're a young man, especially a young man without no daddy figure, you know, you, you, you make those mistakes and I made them, but you know, that was, that, was a, that was a bad first day of school experience. Not necessarily after it was over, because after it was over, you know, everybody just accepted Bean got on big ass shoes, mm -hmm. but you know what I mean? That day before and that day leading up, nigga, that walk to school with them big motherfuckers on, it was like the Harlem Globe try the music was playing bloom 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 Shit was crazy, man. Now, this feeds into my next question. 
which is what are your thoughts on school uniforms? People say that, you know, it's stuff like this that you went through that needs to have school uniforms implemented. So there's, you know, not a segregation of poor and rich and middle class and that sort of thing. Well, that shit wouldn't help me too much because it was the shoes that was fucked up for me. But uh, but if a school uniform was complete head to toe, do you think, do you think people should be wearing school uniforms in public school for these, you know, teasing, roasting, bullying type of scenarios that could happen just from clothes or? Man, listen. Let me tell you something. I've heard arguments for and against it. I don't like the the, the sensitation of our youth. Bullying now is completely different than it was when I was a young man. And the disparagement in our communities don't matter. It doesn't matter what the children have on because you create, in a lot of scenarios, you can create more issue with making parents who are disenfranchised have to figure out how to buy fucking school uniforms. Whereas though, it might be six dudes in the neighborhood who used to be the size of your son, who can give them clothes, and that'll keep you from having a, you know, it might not be the fly as shit, but at least it's something that you can be given for them to wear to school, and the bullying aspect, kids is gonna do that anyway. It don't matter if they all got on the same thing. My sixth grade year of middle school, they tried to make us wear uniforms. That shit ain't changed nothing. We were still talking crazy to each other, still fighting like a motherfucker, still doing goofy shit. Really? So children are gonna be children. Period. So I just think that the, the school uniform aspect is something that's being done to kind of try to instill a level of, of safety in environments where it really doesn't matter, in my opinion, because a child is going to be a child. A bully is a bully, and a child that's getting bullied is, you know, and mind you, it's different now with the social media. I think that that is what needs to be shrunk in our school systems now versus what they got on. You can let the kids wear whatever they want to wear. Just don't let them bring no fucking cell phones to school that's not monitored. You know what I mean? Have them killing themselves at 9, 10, 11 years old, which is fucking crazy to me. So I just I, I never really agree with the school uniforms because it, it causes a lot more problems for the kids as they think they're trying to help because if your parents can't afford to buy you regular clothes, they damn sure ain't going to be able to go and find some, some gray slacks and enough for you to be able to not wear the same outfit every single day. You know what I mean? I think that causes more issue than it does um, helping, in my opinion. Yeah, one can argue that, you know, even though everybody's wearing the same thing, one person might have way more of them, so they look crispy in their uniform compared yeah, to somebody Yeah, and it's not going to change. You got, that's the, especially, in, I went to D.C. public schools, man. Our schooling system is notoriously fucked up educationally. Our test scores was always the worst in the country, and... Our schooling systems had the most dropout rates from, I'm talking about kids dropping out in seventh grade, getting murdered in schools, kind of like what you see going on in Chicago right now in regards to their schooling system with them shutting down a bunch of schools and all that. That's what D.C. public school systems was like. You know, they changed it now. Gentrification has completely changed the city. But when I was growing up, like, you had every aspect of the spectrum. You had that one little boy that got everything, who mama bought him, who, you know, and then you know who those kids usually was? They was the ones with the young parents who mm -hmm. were still in tune with the, the, the fly shit. You know what I mean? Like your mama had you when you was, when she was 14 and now you nine and she fucking 22, 23. And I don't know if my math was right, but <laughs> I'm horrible, but hey, fuck it. I don't give a fuck, nigga, judge me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? So they more in tune. They want you to be fly because they still in tune with that. They stay mentalities in that. And then you got the other spectrum where you had somebody who mother was 55 years old when they had them. And they don't give a fuck about none of that <laughs> shit you talking about. So it's like, and then you got the kids in the middle who came up like I came up who had a mom who would get, like I said, everything that I needed and some of what I wanted. But if you a child and you around it and you building your own character and you coming into your own personality and the influence of the people around you, it's going to make you want the things that you want. So regardless of what the kids have on, we still was in there talking about what Master P was wearing or as little boys or what the flyer shit that whoever we was looking up to at that time or who was famous at that time or the dope dealer niggas in our neighborhood was wearing. So it really didn't matter. You know what I'm saying? I just think that the education needs to be better. 
The school needs to provide programs that really enlighten these kids to where they want to come to school regardless of what they have on. That shit ain't important. Somebody watching this, what's any advice, and of course circumstances could be different, but any general advice to someone experiencing their first day of school? I mean, there's different grades. Somebody might be going into high school for the first time, middle school for the first time that might be watching this. But just any advice for somebody about to have their first day of school? Um, I don't know, man. I think the, the best thing you could do on the first day of school is just try to have fun. It's the first day of school. You know what I'm saying? Like that feeling that you get when you're going in the first day of school and, and depending on what type of student you are, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know the dynamic of what's cool now amongst super young people, but if you're going into like, you know, seventh, eighth, ninth grade, I'm in tune with what's cool to y'all, and the best advice I can give you is just be yourself and try to have fun. You know what I'm saying? Like, because that's what school is really about. I mean, it's about education first, of course, but still, you gotta, you know, have fun and enjoy yourself and try to stay away from from negativity if you can, you know what I'm saying? And and don't be afraid to embrace what you don't know. Like I just said, you know, I didn't know if my math was right. I don't give a, I'm horrible at math. You know why I'm horrible at math? Because I didn't give a fuck about it when I was in school because I was too cool to ask for help. You know what I mean? Don't be like that, ask for help. You know what I mean? Figure out the things that you like and love and, and go for it. From the first day that you get in there, whatever it may be, Utilize those tools and those aspects in your school. And even if you're in a fucked up school, it's people there that want to help you. So find who those people are. And most of all, learn as much as you can, get as much help as you can, and on top of everything, have fun, man. Enjoy yourself. Schools can be very cliquish. Mm -hmm. The jocks hang with the jocks, the nerds might be with the nerds, the popular people with the popular people, the rappers with the other rappers, that sort of thing. What type of person were you in school? Who, what, like, did you hang at a certain clique? Were you the type of guy that was kind of like cool with all the different cliques? What type of kid were you growing up? I was a hustler. That's what I was. Selling Notorious. candy and all that type of stuff? Period. Mm. Well, I got my first job at nine years old at Bluebird's Barbershop on Georgia Avenue in Washington, D.C., brushing people off for dollars. I didn't, like, that's always been my mentality. You know what I'm saying? From that time on, I didn't, you know, I wasn't re- making no real money then, but I had, you know, ice cream truck money and, you know, little shit like that. But that was always my thing. Like, so I was always around the, the dudes in the school that was about getting some money. You know what I mean? And and that was always my clique of friends. We was always them dudes. I was never, you know, with the, the, the bullies because I was never a bully. I could never be a bully. I don't have no love or respect for bully niggas, you know what I mean? And that was, that's a whole nother story. But, you know what I mean, the popular, that kind of goes with who you choose to allow to be the people who determine what's popular, you know what I mean? Because I was popular throughout my entire schooling. Everybody always knew me. Mm. From Raymond Elementary School to McFarland Middle School to Dunbar High School. Everybody always knew Bing. It was either Bing or Ray Allen, one of the two. That was, you know, my two names back then. It wasn't no Chico back then, but um, Ray I, Allen. Yeah, Ray Allen. <laughs> yeah, Ray Allen. Yeah, that's a, we'll talk about that all time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was always a popular person, but I wasn't trying to be popular. I was just mm-hmm. being myself, and then who I was just happened to be a person that motherfuckers like to be around or or fuck with. I was always funny. You know what I mean? Always goofy, big class clown, but I was always intelligent. You know what I mean? But I never challenged myself. I was always the type, I was the type of student that knew that I could do everything that they asked, except for math. But, you know what I mean? I would, I was, I always had women that would always assist me in that area. But uh, I always knew that I was gifted. But if I would have challenged myself, I could have fucked around and who knows, as you, you know, as far as scholastically. But, I was always, always, always about getting some money, man. That's all I ever was into. You know what I mean? And and anybody who knows me from from back in them in them high school, middle school days know that, you know, that's what they'll tell you about being. They like that nigga was that nigga was always about getting some money. 
knowing what you know now and then, you know, obviously what you've already done did is already in the past, but if, what I done did. Yeah, if, you'd have been doing if, a lot of interviews with niggas small. <laughs> <laughs> if 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 Big Bean could talk to Little Bean, what would Big Bean tell Little Bean? I just, you know what, I tweeted that uh, uh, you did. not too long ago, Smalls. I tweeted, if, if you can go back and spend a day with your 16-year-old self, what would be your message to your 16-year-old self? And I would say one thing and one thing only to myself, and that would be I would just keep repeating this shit the whole day. You're not a grown man. You're not a fucking grown man, so stop acting like you're a grown man. You're not an adult. And that's, that was my biggest thing, being a young nigga. I thought I was grown. I thought I was, because I was around uh, men in a lot of sense that weren't grown either, but they were grown in age. So I wasn't getting a lot of influence from men who were teaching you how to do things that I consider to be manly shit now in my life. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I thought I was a grown man. I was around grown men. I was, uh, as far as, you know, physically, and I thought that from probably like 13, 14 years old, now I'm a man. And I would talk to men like I was a man. And that shit was fucking, I, I, it's so many lessons that I know I didn't learn from good dudes that I didn't respect because they weren't the type of men that I thought were men. Because I had a perspective on what a grown man was and didn't have a clue on how to be one, what it took to be one, in any capacity. And life has taught me that, but that's, that would be my message to myself. Nigga, you're not a grown man. Shit the fuck down, listen, and learn. And stop walking around here like you got real responsibility, nigga. You still live with your mama. You know what I mean? You pay bills, but so? You still live with your mama, nigga. You ain't got no real responsibility. You ain't no grown man. Fuck out of here. And that's what I would tell myself over and over again. Nigga would think I was crazy. Now, you are a well-dressed comedian in your field. Mm -hmm. Were you always this well-dressed yep. in school? Yep. Even with the big-ass shoes, small. I was telling you I had the big size 13 shoes in seventh grade. Still was fly, nigga, with the big shoes on. That's what let me know I'm different. That's what let me know it was always something that's, that's been within me that's just, it's just my nature. Cause even with big ass shoes, I still was fly as a motherfucker. And when I was in high school, man, it was legendary. It was a store in DC called Lifestyles. They used to sell Iceberg and Coogee and, and mm. Coogee Sport and all that shit. That's what was big when I was in high school. And man, listen, I used to go in there and literally they would lock the doors when I would come in there. You know what I mean? Like that's as a crazy. 15, 16, 17 year old, Young motherfucker, kid. That's how I was doing it. Like, and then I ended up getting a job at DTLR and on oh. 9th and 8th Street. 9th and H, you know what I mean? Salute to all my niggas that used to come fuck with me on 9th and H at DTLR. You know what I'm saying? I ended up getting a job at DTLR. My uh my manager Jamie, uh, you know what I'm saying, was was family. So she was like, nigga, you 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 spending money anyway. Why not just get a job? Cause I always had a job. Like one of the things that I was always taught by the men that I do, that I did have in my family. And, and even though they was in the streets, they gave me a lot of lessons on how to be in the streets. Like, okay, nigga, I ain't gonna stop you from doing this, but just know what come with it and know how you need to move. So I always kept a job. I, like I said, I started working when I was nine years old at Bluebirds Barbershop on Georgia Avenue. Gotta get them another plug. That's the home base. Uh, then I got a job at Whole Foods Market mm -hmm. as a bagger. You know what I'm saying? In, in, in Rockville, Maryland, I used to catch a train, 18 stops to go, you know, bag up groceries and 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 put waters in the back of people's cars. And, you know, I was doing that with a fake work permit. You know, my Uncle Ernie got me a fake work permit, so I was able to work at 13 and 14 when you're not even supposed to have a work permit. So I did that, and then the next job that I got was at DTLR. And I always kept a pay stub on me, and I never had more money on me than my pay stub said. So I always was into blowing money on clothes, man. Like that's just what, if I were to have, if I was to have saved the money that I used to spend on fucking $500 sweaters and $300 button up shirts and all that shit, man, I could have started a record label or something. <laughs> I don't even fucking know Smalls, but it's always been in me to do that. Like I've been doing it my whole life, man. And the people that know me, that grew up with me in the street, 
and, and and you know that I, you know, have relationships with. They it's not nothing. It's nothing new to them when they see me and see how I dress and that nigga been like that. But I, what I've learned over time is that it doesn't require you to always have to go in and drop a bag and all of that. So certain times you have to, but it's more about relationships. It's about the relationships that you build with people who have the same mind state as you in that regard because you kind of build and you grow with those people within that same mindset and you kind of build relationships that, you know, people will be like, hey, man, I just got something in. I think you'll look dope in this, man. I'm just going to send it to you. Mm. And this was before I became Chico Bean. I had relationships like that with people. I get discounts everywhere I go. You know what I mean? Because just because I, I build relationships with the people that I shop with, you know what I mean? Salute to all the places that I go and, and spend my money, but they look out for me because, you know, like I said, I've been doing it for a long time, so I've kind of learned how to how to navigate that world, but it's something that I've always been into. It's something that I always will be into. It'll never change. Funny you said DTLR. I did an interview with somebody about jobs they had growing up mm -hmm. recently, and they said they had worked at DTLR. Mm -hmm. And what he had done, I don't know if you did this, if you've mm -hmm. seen other people do this, or if this even happens, but every time he went to go work at DTLR, let's say he was wearing, he, he, told, he said that he always wore a certain J. So let's say he was wearing the Jordan 1 or the Jordan 10. Every time he went to that DTLR, he would switch out the shoe in the back Oh, that's that's an old game right there. You know, so <laughs> it was a nigga named James. Hey, James, if you if you see this, my nigga, hey, I fuck with you, man. <laughs> but I gotta tell this story, James. Listen, Ninth and Eighth Street in D.C. Ninth and Eighth DTLR is in the middle of a lot of areas. You know what I'm saying? It's right by. It's on Eighth Street. You know, which is a is in Northeast, which is a, a, a territory of a lot of hoods. And, okay. Like, one of the hoods is Trinidad. You know, you got, I don't want to leave nobody else get the name of hood. That's just the biggest one that was in that area. But anyway, dude named James, he was working there, right? This nigga was legendary. He, he used to fuck in the break room and all of that shit. <laughs> but these, these field boots, the black field boots, you know what I'm saying? The Timberland field boots. He would come and he always, that's all he wore was field boots. So one day... Somebody comes in, they ask for a ten and a half in the field boot. So, dude go back, get the shoe, come back out. Like, man, this shit fucked up. So, let me go get another one. Go back, get the other ten and a half. This one fucked up. Go back, get another ten and a half. This one fucked up, too. So, our manager, she like, who the fuck wear a ten and a half in here? This nigga James. In there with the fresh field boots on. Mm. She say, James. <laughs> he like, oh, hold up, man. Just let me run to the store real quick. I'm out because, I mean, let me go get this shit from the store. I'll be right back. Nigga left and never came back. Oh, wow. Never came back. I seen him two years later at the train station now in Brooklyn. I'm like, nigga, what happened? He said, you know what the fuck happened. I had to get the fuck out of there. So, yeah, that's an old game. Shit, when I was working at Knife and Eight, somebody broke in through the shoe wall it got stuck in the store, couldn't get out, and tried to rip the ceiling down and shit oh, to get out of the store. Wow. It was legendary, man. It That's was legendary. Crazy. I used to, you know, I ain't never stole nothing, but I used to, you know, I used to pull a move or two back in the day. You know what I mean? Nothing crazy, but, you know, this was back when holding shoes wasn't illegal. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I, it's that nowadays, they got this raffle and shit. This shit, like, winning the lottery now, but back in the day, you know what I mean? You used to be able to, when Jordans came out, they came out. If you was in line to get them, then you was in line to get them. So, you know, I used to, you know, I had a little system in place. And, uh, you know, salute to that system, man. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? So, but, uh, so, so you've heard of stuff like this. You've what, seen stuff man, like this. I've seen some legendary shit at DTLR. Motherfucking managers stealing money. Mm. It was, it was, a, but it was, hey, that was the funnest job, like regular job that I've ever had, man. Salute to DTLR, man. It's a great company. I still support them. My store manager is, 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 uh, is the lady who managed my store is, um, in a, a high ranking position now. And, and, you know, I still support it and still love the company, man. So salute to DTLR because y'all, y'all made a nigga high school years a whole lot smoother with me having that connection now what about when it comes to 
superlatives. You know, when schools, like, they give out these awards or these titles, not necessarily a, a, a physical trophy, but, you know, in the yearbook, best dress, most popular, most likely to succeed. I'm assuming you got best dress, but correct me if I'm wrong. No, I didn't get best dress because oh, wow. I didn't uh, <laughs> I didn't sign up for the shit. You had, they had a thing where you had to be in school at a certain time to be able to fill out what you wanted to compete for. And oh, man, I wasn't wow. coming to school for that shit. I you know what I mean? Like nah, I was just, man, fuck that shit. I know how fly I am. I don't need the, the confirmation of the, the niggas voting. Nah. But <laughs> nah, nah, I didn't. I, I won a. I won, pro, well, I won prom prince. I lost to Vernon Davis. Vernon, <laughs> Vernon Davis of the NFL, man. Salute to Vernon, man. We went to uh, high school together. That nigga beat me for prom king, man, by like a couple votes, nigga. That shit was crazy. But yeah, I, I won second place at the prom, that prom prince in the motherfucking building. And I lost to a nigga that made it to the NFL, nigga. So, you know, he got rich first. I'm getting rich second. Fuck it. I don't give a fuck. Shit worked out. <laughs> I never even heard of a prom prince. Title. They gave it. To, they just. <laughs> they gave it to me because it was me. They was like, man, we can't let the nigga Bean go out like that. We gonna give it to him. Give him the prom prince. I never even. And heard then of my it. man Black saluted my man Kevin. My man Black. They gave that nigga third place. Cause we was just so. We was them <laughs> niggas, man. We was the niggas <laughs> in school, man. So they gave us third place. They gave my man Black third place. You know what I mean? Salute to my man K Black. That's my nigga. Vernon, my dude, too, man. Salute to Vernon, man. But uh, yeah, I lost. I came in second place in prom prince to Vernon Davis. Wow. Yeah. Did they have a prom princess? And Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the prom princess was my date. You know what I mean? <laughs> that was my date. And I was a, listen, man, I used to be so legendary in high school smalls, man. That's why I'm the way I am now. I don't have the same, I don't have the same aspirations as niggas. Because mm -hmm. I jumped off the porch so early with this shit. Sounds like it. No, really. Like, when I was in high school, my girlfriend was, you know, working at Bank of America. Oh, wow. I used to, yeah, nigga, I used to drive. <laughs> she had a Nissan Quest van. I used to drive the van to school. Man. <laughs> Oh, man. High, you know, I hear people tell stories about how fucked up high school was for them. It was not <laughs> fucked up for me. I loved high school, nigga. You're, pro <laughs> You're probably the only one I've interviewed that smiled throughout this whole topic. Man, I loved <laughs> school. School wasn't bad. Listen, man, like I... believe I, you when you say it. Yeah, I, I, you know, I went to, like I said, I went to D.C. public schools, man. We were surrounded by violence, death, and, and n the worst type of education. But it wasn't nothing like it, man. Like, I couldn't imagine going to school anywhere else. I only went to D.C. public schools. Like I said, Raymond Elementary School, McFarland Middle School. McFarland, my middle school was East Side High in real life. Like, that's what we was, it was legendary in McFarland, man. And then Dunbar, Dunbar was the, boy, you had to be a special motherfucker to operate. And this, and this Dunbar right here, this one. Mm. They knocked it down. You know what I'm saying? They you knocked it down. Have it yeah, on, they knocked on. it down, man. That's how much it mean to me, man. That's crazy. They knocked it down. Like, but this this building right here, man. Listen, I did some legendary shit in that building right there. <laughs> legendary, Slim. I man, never even knew that was one of your tattoos. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, for real. Like they, it's, it's oh, a new building great. now. Dunbar is in D.C. Is they didn't built a new school? Uh, it's like a. a I haven't even been in there yet, like it's, mm. which is so crazy. But they done built a whole new campus, and it's a beautiful building from the outside. But this building right here, woo! Listen, and that's the thing. Like in all, of, and, and it's, I'm sure it's like this in public schools all over the country. But each school had a hood that ran. That there was just too many of them niggas for you to ever have any real smoke with them in the school. Mm. And that hood in, in my school was certain quarters, the border. It was a thousand of these niggas. Mm -hmm. And my school didn't have no, this Dunbar didn't have no walls on the inside. It was just medians and shit on the inside to separate the classroom. And it had doors everywhere. So if you got into it with them niggas from the border, they would be letting motherfuckers in from the hood into the school. Oh, wow. To get with you. So, like, Great. listen, man. It was, if you could have never, if you navigated them hallways and you was the type of nigga I was up Dunbar, you got to love it, man. This building will forever be something special to me, man. Like, I, I can't imagine, you know, going anywhere else. And I had, you know, 
I had connections at high schools all over the city. You know, I knew I'm from, you know, I originally lived uptown and Dunbar was my neighborhood school. So I was supposed to go to Roosevelt High School. Mm. But, you know, what I mean, I ended up finessing and getting into Dunbar because that's where I wanted to go. Because, you know, what I mean, that was the type of environment that I wanted to be in as far as what I always, they used to call Dunbar the fashion show. That's what they used to say about the school because all the niggas in there was, you know, known for being out getting money. Rayful Edmonds, the biggest drug dealer, one of the biggest drug dealers the con this country has ever known, went to Dunbar High School. Didn't know that. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, like, of course, this was a long time ago, but still, that's always the, 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 the mystique that that high school carries. So, mm. listen, man, I, I wanted to be there. That's what I wanted to go in and, and make a name for myself and conquer that. And, boy, I love that school, man. Have you had a high school reunion yet? Uh, no, 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 I haven't. Wait. Well, I don't think they did one for our class, which is fucked up now that I think about <laughs> it. It's like, fuck them niggas, man. We don't never want them to come back. <laughs> nah, I don't think they did one for us, though. You know what I mean? I don't think they did one for us, but I mean. But if they do do one, let's say they do a 15-year one. Right. Would you attend it? Would that be something you would look forward to? Or are you the type of guy, eh, I'm not really interested? Yeah, i go. Why not? You know what I'm saying? I, I would go. I would be excited about going. But the school doesn't even exist anymore. Like, this this building is gone. So the high school that I went to is, you know, they knocked it down. Yeah, but they still might. Uh, yeah, they still could do a, a reunion. Might a hall or something yeah, and have but, a reunion. Well, that would be fun. You know what I mean? That would be fun. I definitely would go because we wouldn't do nothing but just sit in there and just trip out about all of the wild shit we did when we was in high school. And I'm one of the people who've been blessed in, in my career to be successful at doing what I do. So, you know, I, I would definitely want to go back and see, you know, uh, how everybody else is doing and I haven't spoken with in a while. And. You know, for the people that's, you know, a lot of a lot of my classmates, unfortunately, you know, fell victim to the street and a lot of them are dead or in jail. So for me to be one of the people that has, you know, wiggled my way around that, I mean, it's still a day to day struggle. It's a day to day struggle for an African-American male in America to, to constantly. It's a, every day you take a risk leaving out your house to not have to have that be your reality. But, you know, I've been blessed, man. So I would love to go back and, and fuck around. But. You know, as of as of now, I don't think they did a, a high school reunion. And if they did, I missed the motherfucker. So, you know, like I used to miss school a lot too. So. Would people be surprised at the level of success you've garnered, or mm. is this one of those things that people knew this was going to happen? They foreseen the success that you've garnered thus far. Uh, I think I think that they would have. They niggas knew I was going to do something, but I don't think anybody knew I was going to be a comedian. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because Shit, I didn't know I was going to be a comedian. You know what I mean? I, shit, I didn't know if I was going to live to be 21 at certain times in my life. So, you know what I mean? I knew, but people always knew because, like I said, I was always a hustler. I always was about making it happen, getting up and making something shake at all times. And I always was a fly nigga. Like, you know, I always kept the newest shit. Like, I was the first nigga in the school with a camera phone, mm. all that. So... I think people knew that the hustle in me would, you know, if I was able to, to, to escape the realities of what a lot of my comrades and, and classmates and people from my era were falling victim to, if I was able to navigate out of that, then I would do something uh, prosperous and lay down some type of, you know, positive blueprint in my life. So I think people would, would say that, you know, they knew that I was going to be successful at something, just not what, because shit, I didn't even know I was going to be successful at what I'm successful at at that time.